Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. I am Justin Fox, joined here by Jennifer Sheffro. Jennifer, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. So you and I know each other. Um, we worked together um, on the 3HL, which I'm wearing the hoodie, representing. You said you have yours over there. Um, you helped out uh, with the 3HL, which is the crazy three-on-three -three pro hockey league that I decided or tried to start five years ago, sort of put on hold. There's, there's uh, definitely some interesting things that fans of the 3HL – should stay tuned for <laughs> we won't mention them on this show just yet uh but you should definitely stay tuned but jennifer yeah thank you for joining me yeah I, thanks for having me anytime i will i will do a quick little intro so people know who you are you're you've got a couple cool things happening right now um but i'll i'll go quickly into your in your bio so you are a i guess i, I could have said this i didn't even need to read this but Long time, obviously, hockey fan, 20 years in the hockey industry, um, training uh, hockey players uh, from junior to pro. Uh, you are, you were one of the, I'm going to add, you're probably one of the first people that I can actually knowingly add to your bio um, just because I know you. So you were the general manager um, of the Guelph Brewers, one of the teams on the 3HL. Um, you obviously train pro hockey players and all the way through junior to pro um, you worked with pro hockey players you've worked in hockey camps for many many years um, and now you are a podcaster um, on the Dean and Blundell sort of um, platform network. Yep. network whatever you want to call it um, and you have your own your own podcast um, with uh, with Leah right Chris yeah and Leah um, and so you guys have, what is the name of your podcast? Ho hockey all the time. Always, all, all I am is hockey. All I am is hockey. I was going to say all day I, Adidas. It was only, but uh, <laughs> yeah. so your, 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 your hockey podcast, um, you've had some really cool guests on there. Grant, yeah, Fischer, have, uh, Jim Thompson. Thompson, right. From Aurora. Um, cool. Who's your, who's your, so welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. How, how yeah, are we things have, with uh, you? I'm sorry. How are things with you? Uh, things are good. Busy. I mean, I, I do. I write for Dean Blundell. I haven't done much writing. Um, I'm not really. I don't consider myself much of a writer, but I kind of got thrown into it. So viral you know, in what was it? Sweden or Finland or something like that? Yeah, I, I kind of blew up in Finland. Finland, um, yeah. Briefly, uh, I think like over 75% of the population of the country had read an article written about me and then my personal blog actually blew up and I had hundreds of thousands of views um, and I'm still getting views on that one article uh, trials and tribulations hockey edition um, daily at least five to ten more, more so across Canada and the US. Five to ten thousand a day? No, just five to five ten. Five to ten. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I haven't written on there since June. Okay. So, I mean, people are still watching, paying attention. So, so you need to give the fans what they want. You need to give the people what they want, some more content, right? Yeah, I just have to find my flow. I mean, I, like, I never considered myself much of a writer. I, I used to write for the Barn Burner Network. I used to cover Leaf games. Right. And it took me, like, four hours just to put together, like, 50 words because, you know, I'm, I'm not a writer. I never considered myself a writer. So I'm working on that and uh, it's coming along. Okay, cool. So, so what would you consider yourself? Obviously a huge sports fan, huge hockey fan. Um, I, I remember, you know, when we first connected um, in probably would have been like 2015, I guess um, yeah. you, know, you were, you were seeing sort of what we were doing. You wanted, you know, you saw that there was an opportunity you wanted to, to participate in, in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah. and, and obviously we're, you know, an integral part and, you know, uh, uh, made a huge contribution to the 3HL. Um, what, you know, what, what is your passion? Tell us, tell us a little bit about in the mind 
of Jennifer Sheffro? Well, basically right now, I started training a 12-year-old boy, Nate, here in, in Toronto. Um, I've never worked with kids that young, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So okay. it's a whole new thing for me because, I mean, he's training. I'm training him at a high performance level. Um, his parents hired me. They want him to go all the way to the NHL. And from what I've seen so far, he definitely has a work ethic. Oh, yeah? Okay. And he's, he's good. He's really yeah, yeah. good. He's okay. out hard. But it's challenging. I mean, you know, with kids, you have two small kids yourself. Like, you can't push them too hard. Right. Right? So it's finding a balance. I still have a kid back in Pittsburgh that I'm training, but with the, with the border and stuff, it's, like, impossible. Right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, aside from that, I just my, – my, my goal is to make a name for myself in hockey and my dream <laughs> – since I was 11 was to coach right. in the NHL. So, I mean, that has also changed too. working with you in the three HL because I loved your vision and I, I miss that hockey so much. It was so good. It was pretty, it was pretty amazing. I mean, we put on a pretty good show people, people, I think one thing, maybe you can speak to this as well. People underestimate really how good those guys are. Right. And, and like the quality of hockey that, and, the, and the excitement and the entertainment. Like I had a conversation with my dad actually the other day. And I mean, it kind of went off uh, on, a, on a tangent. I, I mentioned sort of the upcoming news and some of the exciting things that are happening with the 3HL. And, you know, one of the things he questioned me was like, you know, how, you know, how much, because his whole thing was that the players came, they went, there was sort of like eight teams or, you know, he, he didn't see it as, and it's, it's my dad. I'm going to, you know, it is what it is. Love him. But, you know, obviously he's had a lot of skepticism as did many people. And it speaks to the fact that, you know, he, he, he sort of looked at it with the, you know, the, the eyes or the lens of, you know, it's not the NHL. It's not this established league. How can it be anything? And one of the comments though, that I really think, uh, and I, I started talking to him about it a little bit. And it's obviously been a, a year or so since we've, we've had any events was the whole notion that the enjoyment that the players had, right? The, the, the camaraderie that was built amongst the players. And I mean, the competition was obviously pretty tough at times, but the camaraderie and the enjoyment where you had guys that had played, you know, high levels, like we're talking, you know, obviously elite levels as, as children, junior at the highest level, had played in, you know, at the highest levels of pro in the NHL or various other leagues at saying things like, this is the most fun I've ever had playing hockey. Right. So like, to me, that was amazing. Right. I don't know what right. your thoughts are on that. You probably got a little more insight because you were around a lot of the players, even more so at times than I was just, you know, being, you know, obviously the manager of the, the Guelph Brewers and just kind of like helping out in game day, you know, operations at the events like what, what was your, what's your take on the way the players, you know, uh, saw the league? I think one of the beautiful things about hockey is it's a really small industry. So a lot of the players, um, they kind of already knew each other and a lot of them hadn't seen each other for years right. um, coming together. And it was like, no time was lost. Um, the friendships were already there. Um, I mean, the guys had fun, especially when they were winning, um, when they played teams that like met their third level you know what I mean um right. they played they played harder like I think it was one of the last couple tournaments the, the hockey just kept getting better and better and you could see um that the players were into it you could I mean there were some that were you know struggled but I mean there, there, there was levels different levels there we we kind of started off with a motley crew uh from OHL level up to pro Right. And then you kind of separate. That's where you separate the players, where you see who's who's good, who's OK and who's, you know, you know, kind of like a backup, so to speak. Right. Right. Um, right. But I mean, like I, I pretty much dealt with every single player and I they loved it. They always spoke so highly of the, 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 the speed, the tempo, the everything. Um, I mean, we find, we tweaked a few things in the second season, uh, I remember with the, I think it was like, with how the teeth, the, the, oh, I can't remember. It's been so long, but yeah, I, mean, like, I mean, we they, were always playing with rules, like offside, like different right, things right, that we right, were right. doing and just like they, they how it was how wrapped, the, right? Yeah. Yeah. They liked how it was, it was developing. They liked that. I mean, um, it just, it just got better and the players fed off that. 
and they performed better. And right. a lot of them were, were sad. To, I, I'm still in touch with quite a few of them. A lot of them were sad to see the leak fold. And I'm just always like, oh, don't worry. Let's just say, take hold it on, hold on. It didn't fold. It never folded. It just it, stopped. It, it just, it was put on hold. It, hiatus. It, it was put on hold. I mean, truth, truth be told. I mean, I'll, I'll reveal this to the world right here, right now. Um, I, I went through a, a significant uh, incident with another business where we were forced to literally close that business, shut the doors and walk away from a, you know, multi-chain retail business. Um, and that, because of that, that put a huge impact on my sort of personal life and finances, um, which meant that I, I could no longer spend the time and effort um, focused on the 3HL. Um, and that, that's basically why, I mean, it literally was put on hold because of the fact that we were trying to find ways to fund it, which yeah. is why I started what I'm doing now, which is backers, was to fund the 3HL. And thankfully, just this past week, the very first campaign launched on backers. So now there's an opportunity for us to launch campaigns to raise money for the teams in the 3HL, along with the other news that we'll, we'll leave for now, which is 10 million times more exciting um, that will like completely revolutionize what, you know, the opportunity of the 3HL is, I believe, um, and how it's perceived and, you know, it's kind of, it's uh, stake in the ground, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, um, it, whatever it wants to claim to be. Um, th those things now are back in place that, you know, unfortunately, two years ago at this point, you know, in sort of 2018, um, you know, things were, were unfortunately not there. So like a lot of things, a lot of things that are really exciting, we go through growing pains. You know, we've had to, you know, put our, our season on hold, um, arguably for, for two years, the league was put on hold, but at no point um, have I ever felt like that was the end. Um, it was only just um, on hold and that the, the, we would definitely get back uh, to it at some point. And we're here. That's some point, and that's kind of why I'm excited to have you on. I know I actually reached you, up, reached out to you a little bit earlier because I saw what you were doing with Dean Bundell and sort of your your podcast um, to congratulate you on on doing some stuff. But it's very appropriate that we had a conversation a few weeks ago. Now the conversation has kind of evolved over the past one week um, into what the huge opportunity for the 3HL and, and as we kind of look to, you know, have a season, maybe, maybe very soon, maybe very soon. I've, I, you know, I, I don't want to say dates or numbers or times, but, you know, we could be talking weeks potentially, you know, maybe, you know, at the very least, I think, you know, a, a couple months, you know, to have a 3HL season uh, coming back. So you heard it here first folks. <laughs> HL is coming back. Um, it's just a matter of how we how we put it together. So it's going to be exciting. So I'm going to throw out a name because I'm always all about uh, all about just throwing letting the cat out of the bag. Yarmer Yager or Corey Perry? Who's a better fit for the three HL? I mean, well, age wise would be Perry for sure. But I mean, Yager is a legend. I mean. He's Everyone, an absolute right? beast. He's yeah. still playing, I think. I, I mean, I think he, he could handle, you know, a 15-minute game or, you know. Three fives. Yeah, yeah. Three. We're, yeah, we're switch it. That's a new rule change. So you heard it here first. You just you just said it. But, yeah, we're going to switch it to three five-minute periods, just like three overtimes, basically. Right? We were doing two seven-minute halves before. We're switching it to three five-minute periods. I did draft Yager in our in our first ever uh the, the draft one time which yeah when we, were, when we were at uh at uh wags right when we had the, yep. the draft party there yeah that was that was actually ironically that was the second draft the first oh, draft it? i spent about 14 days sitting at my dining room table finding Dude. every player who wasn't signed to a contract in the nhl um that either had been you know either played in the ohl all the way up to play in the NHL and then I tweeted out to them and then I tweeted to their thing that's how we got so many of our players in the league I don't know well, if that's anyone's how you heard got that me story. too you tweeted looking for coaches was it <laughs> yeah there you go so I was using Twitter to literally build 
the brand and the league. And I, I, I think I drafted, I'll have to go back and look at it. I, I maybe 200 players and, wow. and about, about a hundred of them were like, the fuck, who is this? Right. What, what did I just get drafted to? And then I, that started the conversation, you know, talk about like guerrilla marketing, guerrilla tactics to like, Hey, this is a new league. You know, you should come check it out. And that's probably how we got that first foothold of maybe 10, 15, 20 guys of like, you know, very significant stature in the hockey world to kind of understand like the Brett McLean's and stuff like that to say, Hey, you know what, this sounds like a cool idea. You know, let's, let's look in, in, into it a little further. And then they, they started to become involved. So um, yeah. that was how the first draft actually went down. The second year though, we had a draft oh, room and all the GMs and that was like a legit, we had the board up and all <laughs> Yeah. At Weggs, awesome. right? We rented that, uh, the, the private space at Weggs. So that was kind of fun too, to get, you know, and that was sort of the second year. So we'll have a draft. Drafts are fun. We'll definitely have a draft. Um, and, and there's some other fun things we'll, we'll add into that. So Corey Perry, uh, Yarmer Yager, let's, let's see if we can get them in the league. I, anyone else watching, I encourage you to write in ballot who you think should be the number one draft pick in the, the new revised revamped 3HL or, or on the 3HL tour. Um, okay. So let's shift a little bit. Tell us about what you're doing, uh, Jen. Tell us a little bit about your, obviously talked about writing, but how, like, who's your next guest for uh, your podcast? Uh, I think it's a Mitch Hurd. I let Christian take care of uh, recruiting the guests. We had a few uh, bigger names lined up, but the scheduling conflicts, it's hard because it's a live show. It's right. every week, Wednesday, 9.30 um, Eastern Standard Time. Like, right. I, I lucked out getting Grant and uh, Cam Jansen. They were both great. We have a lot of interest and in, uh, probably about five or six players, notable players that are playing in the league now um, that will be on the show in the future. Okay. Uh, just this week, we had a difficult. So Mitch Hurd, he was, I think he was drafted. He got hurt. Now he's playing over in Europe. Um, he's 26, but he's trying to get back. He wants to play in the NHL. So I think we're going to have him on tomorrow night. Um, Tell him which, there's, a, there's a, probably a spot for him uh, here in, in North America in the 3HL. Well, definitely. Because, I mean, Christian Christian's my co-host, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. Talked, it, was, it was actually funny because we talked to Grant Pure about it. Because there's another, there's another league in the States that Grant's part of. Three Ice. Three yeah. Ice. Starting yeah. next summer. I, I think it's great. I actually, I think... You know, I, I'm when I heard about that, I mean, everyone's kind of like, hey, they stole your idea. Hey, they're, you know, and I literally looked at their website and it was like everything we've been talking about, just like rewritten, um, you know, and they're like, oh, revolutionized. Like, yeah, OK, hold your horses, folks. It's already been done. We're already doing it. Um, but I think it's really cool. Um, it, it basically I mean, you and I talked about this on, on a call. I think it validates everything that we thought five years Absolutely. ago when we started the league. And I mean, I think it will be great. I think there'll be a great farm system for guys to go play from our league in the summer, right? So be like, Hey, you know what? We'll play, we'll play pro hockey in the, in the winter three on three pro hockey. And then let's go play in the farm leagues down in the States uh, during the summer. So well, everybody knows Canada perfects. What a, what, a, so. what a slap in the face, right? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> be like, we'll go play in a farm league called the, the thrice. Not once, not twice, but let me get my finger if I can you thrice. That's Anyways, hilarious. Um, <laughs> I'm all for that. It's funny. Yeah, but anyways, like, that, like I, I you can't say no to more hockey. hockey no, hockey. but but yeah. I think it validates that three on three. Absolutely. And and the concepts that we literally, I mean, the no icing, the the obviously three on three, the 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 penalties with, or uh, sorry, penalty shot with chasers. Um, you know, all these different things, the end to end excitement, the three, five minute periods, all these things. I mean, we, we literally like we, we didn't, I think some of those rules we didn't create either. They're three on three type rules for kids hockey. Right. So um, we didn't create three on three hockey. We, I saw the NHL's overtime in 20, you know, 14 in the AHL and then 2015 in the NHL and thought, Hey, that would be perfect if there was a three on three pro hockey league. And we started the 3HL literally November 11th. It was incorporated 2015 and arguably trademarked in, I think, the same year. So we were way ahead of the curve on that regard. Um, yeah. We're going to come back bigger, better, stronger than I think what their 
um, what they're able to do or potentially, you know, on, on par and which is a bit ahead of where we were before. And if we can make some, some strides. No question, Justin. We're in Canada, remember? You're right, in America. right, We've right. Got, yeah, I mean, who's We've got a yeah. running a bonus there. Right, I mean, do you don't, and you don't have to sell hockey Canadians. So tell me, so Grant Fuhr, what was his take on when you talked about the three HL and three ice? What was his? Uh, he was really excited about it. It's kind of like sounds like he he's going to be a coach, or it didn't sound like he knew, had too much information. Um, but it basically cut when they travel around the states, um, and it's a summer league, and they're looking for pro players that are able to come and play. Um, and I think it starts next summer. Yeah, next summer was the schedule. That was what they said a year yeah, or so ago. But but it didn't say it didn't sound like it. What like it, it wasn't. All, he didn't think he had all the information. It right. was just kind of a new idea um, that he was getting involved in. Yeah. But he's living in California now, so for him yeah. to take part. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's, I mean, I, like I said, um, when, when, when an industry starts um, and someone, like, what is it? Um, copying is the greatest form of flattery, flattery, I guess. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's great. You're, you're copied us. You put a, a league down the States. Let's now may the may the best league win, right? Um, and that let's you know I think I obviously everyone knows where I stand, um, you know. Hence I'm wearing my I'm <laughs> proud whatever loud and proud. But so so okay. So you've got Grand Fury, uh, a couple other other athletes. Um, where do you see where do you see sort of your coaching career? I, I mean I assume you're going to come help out with the three HL um, in in one capacity or another. Um, where do you see kind of your career? What are, what are your thoughts? On well, I, 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 I pride myself as a mentality coach and a skills development. Um, so I see a player and I see their weaknesses and I strengthen them. I give them exercises and workouts that will help um, make their weaknesses better. Uh, right. And I also deal with, with the younger players. I deal with, you know, mentality, um, how to deal with tryouts, interviews, how to talk to coaches if you have issues, leadership. Um, dealing with pressure and everything. It's, it's different because I'm building and shaping the mind as well as the player. Right. Um, so hopefully, I mean, like I noticed that nowadays in, in hockey cultures being attacked so viciously and granted there are some issues that need to be tweaked. Right. I don't think it's as big as a mess as everyone's crying out to be. I mean, it's society. It's just, there's, there's just crappy parts of every system, every, every area in life there, there's, there's, there are people that bring down the whole the whole crowd. So I'm not on that bandwagon attacking hockey culture. Hockey culture is amazing to me. It, it teaches it teaches you know the kids uh, values and friendship and this that and the other. Um, but pressure is so bad. It's so high. And a lot of these players, they something happens like say in their personal life and it affects their game and they can't seem to get it back. We've seen it over and over again. Matt Murray when his father passed away, he came from being a two time Stanley Cup back-to-back Stanley Cup champion to barely even be able to stop the puck. Now, he's working his way back, but I think with the right mentality coach, he can be the champion he once was. So that's where someone like me would come in and work with re-establishing his confidence. Because of like a lot of the male coaches, they don't have the sensitive touch a woman has, the patience, right? right. right? It's like, do it, do your job, get out of here. But we are fragile. We're all fragile, whether men want to admit it or not. We are. So... It's interesting. So it's sort of like the sports psychology approach, right? Um, yeah, yeah more definitely. Left. So, so I, I will touch on the hockey culture. And I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what sort of where, what you're referencing with regards to the full hockey culture. But um, I think, I think as with any um, established um, institution, if you will, I think a lot of the establishment is being questioned as mm-hmm. to whether you know, whether it's about like what everything's being questioned, right? Everything's being put under the microscope. Um, and I think you definitely, you know, there are issues around, um, I froze there for a second, around sport in general, not just hockey, um, but around the the sort of the um, sport culture around, you know, that you mentioned the, the pressure that's put on kids at, you know, super young ages, like it used to be, you know, probably back in the day, it was, you know, when, when, you know, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16, you're starting to get that pressure. Now it's like, 
you know, six, seven, eight, you know, nine, 10, like super young, um, where, you know, and there's a lot of issues around, you know, dual sports or playing one sport. I know for hockey, even when I was a kid, you know, it was, it was just starting to get into that, you know, where you played hockey all year long. There was right. like summer hockey and all these different things, you know, and whereas, you know, someone like myself, and I think a lot of the people in, in sort of my generation played another sport, they played lacrosse, say in my, my case, or soccer or basketball or, you know, some other sport and they got other activities in, even though they were at, you know, a, a higher level of hockey. So I think there's a lot of things that have shifted that way where every kid you talked about, I was joking, you know, the kid that you talked about earlier, the kid that's going to be, you know, has aspirations for the NHL. Like I'll ask you a question, like how likely is that aspiration to, to pan out? I mean, it's, I think you're running on less than 1% of players go pro. Right. So it's, but if you put the work in, if you have the skill and you get yourself noticed, anything's possible. At the end of the day, it's not even about being drafted. You look at players that go undrafted that end up having huge careers and like uh, Pavel Datsuk, he went undrafted and he's one of the best right. hockey players that ever played for Detroit. Um, you got to think about that, but it really comes down to work ethic and exposure. So if the kid is willing to put the work in, he will go somewhere. It's all. So when it's all does mental. that start, start though? When, no, I get it's. I get it's mental, but so so you're saying put the work in. So obviously you have to have the <laughs> skill, but but is there maybe go to the emotional side or the the mental side or the psychological side? You know what? Where does that part start? Where you start coaching into like um, like readiness and being sort of ready for the game. A. I think yeah. once you get to like, is, double, it, like is it when you get to a certain level or eight? Yeah, I think it's like when between 13 and 14 and when you're on the precipice of triple A and when, you know, like for now Nate's double A and they hired me to get him to triple A in two seasons where I'm like, well, I could probably get him to triple A in one season and then COVID happened. So, I mean, that kind of threw, threw a, you know, crutch in things. But um, I think building a child's mentality in sport starts and it should start immediately. Um, parents, for example, they can ruin that with their bad behaviors at practice and, and at well, games. I didn't even get into that part, like parents, <laughs> right? Parents I mean, and, you, and their attitudes around. But if you train the kid, it, like it's it's a really all about about just being a decent person on and off the ice. And if you train that person, that child, to act accordingly, right, and take ownership for who they are, it doesn't really matter what age. As soon as they start listening and they start, you know. Sh like showing that they're listening like for for my nate uh, for i call him my kid all the time people get confused you have a 12 year old <laughs> um for for nate i mean he puts the work in he trains every day for me he sees me once or twice a week and then he has his team practice but he puts the work in he's up in the morning before school doing a few exercises he's texting me what very rarely he's texting me and said i'm tired like he's into it so right right so that's interesting you mentioned so i mean just so people are watching out there understand so from my understanding, maybe things have changed in 25 years, but you've got, you know, A, AA, AAA in sort of minor hockey in Toronto, at least the GTHL, which is previously MTHL. And then that kind of, you know, AAA is at every level, there's a AAA loop. And then when you get into what Bantam, there's the, the OHL draft, you know, and then you kind of get into, if you weren't drafted there, you kind of get into junior, junior A, junior B, GMHL, that kind of thing. But usually there's like a, a trajectory that the majority of players, you know, that go to at least the OHL, get drafted the OHL, um, you went through sort of double A at the minimum and then triple A sort of most of their minor hockey because you're playing against kids that are better. Obviously your skill gets better sort of and it, it incrementally uh, increases over time. I'm going to ask a very blunt question. How does a kid who has good skills, um, you know, what is, what is maybe a, um, a preparation or a thing that, you know, if you said, here's three things you need to do to mentally prepare for um, a, I won't just say a career in hockey, but like the next few years of your hockey life, you know, to a 12 year old, what are a couple of things that they need to do to mentally prepare for hockey? Well, um, it's all about 
making a choice. It's a decision. And I have this conversation with the parents and the, the child before I actually take them on. And it's all about, um, you know, like I said, work ethic, um, how bad you want it. And um, a third one, I mean, it's their kids. You got to go easy. <laughs> you can't overwhelm them. But um, you kind of get a sense when you talk to someone, when I talk to someone, I kind of get a sense of like whether I believe them or not, I, the passion, you know what I mean? Like passion speaks like you, for example, when you talk about the three HL or your kids, like you just exude this like amazing energy. And I, I, that's what draw, drew me to you. Like when I met you, I'm like, okay, I'm hooked line. Singer. Some people I mean, call it crazy, but that's. But be crazy, be crazy <laughs> yeah, because yeah, normal exactly. is boring, right? Normal right. doesn't get you anywhere. Right. People that actually work, think outside the box and work outside the box are known to be crazy until they make it big. And now everybody wants, oh, yeah. Everyone I'm says it's a great idea, idea, right? Overnight success that takes 20 years, right? And yeah, that's exactly. That's a great idea, right? Everyone, You know what? <laughs> in, in about three months, everyone's going to come back and be like, oh, my God, what a great idea. I knew it from the start. And we'll be like, yo, did you? Where were you a year and a half ago when we yeah. were, you know, anyways. Um, yeah, well, but- you know what, people, people learn. And the thing, the thing with, with any any athlete that's trying to move forward, like I scared the hell out of my 16, 17 year old. He started, he's in Pittsburgh. He started playing late, but man, was he good. And I'm right. like, okay, if you're willing to put the work in, there's, there's potential you can go pro, whether it be in the NHL, AHL or overseas, whatever. And he started training under my program. He was doing good, but the girlfriend, new girlfriend was like, oh, I need to see you more. And that took, took right. priority. So I've had discussions with Nate, who's 12. And I'm like, you're going to come to a point because he's just starting to like girls now. We talk about these things. Um, and I said, you know, like I gave him the example of my, my other kid, um, <laughs> Ian in Pittsburgh, who like literally called me and said, I can't do this. Like, I just want to spend time with my friends and girlfriend. And I'm like, then you will not go where you want to go, especially at your age. So it's all about making a decision on where do you want to go and how, how hard you're willing to, you know this better than anyone, right? You had a vision and you went through the steps to get there. You took a break, you readjusted and you're going at it again. Right. Like it's people like you that actually do succeed because they keep at it. Right. So it's that, it's that perseverance, right? That consistency. So, I mean, that's something that is interesting to talk about entrepreneurs and, and you know, 12 year old hockey players. Um, there's, there is a similarity there in the sense that you have to prioritize what your priorities are as same word twice, but you know what I mean? Like you have to pick your priorities and then prioritize those priorities. Right. So, you know, if the girlfriend is number one, well, so our friends are number two and hockey's number three. Well, guess what? You're not going to try and you're not going to persevere and you're not going to succeed. I mean, pretty much that's, um, you know, that's, that's the, the bottom line. And, and I guess it's, it's, so what, what's your take on that? Like, what's, what's to like, yeah, I can see that. I mean, I was a 16 year old boy. 18 well, he's boy, actually came back to me know? recently and wants me to train him again. So I okay. guess either the relationship fizzled out no surprise oh, I mean, yeah. you know what i mean he wasn't marrying yeah. her and yeah. i had to be the one to tell him that i said it's very unlikely that this is the girl you're going to marry and if she is the right one she will wait she will let you do what you need to do right but 16 17 year old boy's brain like it's like scrambled eggs it's harder to deal with now nate on the other hand he listens and he, he understands right and i've given him one day off where he can have time with his friends away from hockey everything and sometimes he's calling me saying i need to work out like this yeah. kid's in it, win it. So it all comes down to, it's like that phrase, all in. If you're all right. in, invested in yourself and, and where you're going, you, you will get there. Odds are you will get there. Um, right. I've always, I'm a firm believer in what we believe in, what we think about, the dreams that we have, what burns inside, like that desire inside of you, Justin, you know, like the 3HL, because it burns so deeply. We're meant to have those things. They're not just teasers. They're not like, here, this is, haha, <laughs> dangle it in your face. No, this is something you're meant to have. If you desire and you burns and you can't stop thinking about it, it is what you're meant to have. You just have to put the work in and believe in yourself. Right. Same goes for anything and everyone, independent or entrepreneurs, new businesses, athletes, anybody, even writers. And I hear myself talking. I'm like, I'm not much of a writer. And then I bang out a great article. So it's all comes down to belief in yourself and not right. listening to anyone else. Head down. Confidence, oh. confidence. I just want to make a side note. Apologize to all 16-year-old boys. I can't defend you because your brains are like 
Scrambled, what did you eggs. Say? scrambled eggs. Yeah, I was there, and I know exactly what your brain is. <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely all about perseverance, consistency, um, having that vision, that focus, and tunnel vision. It, My right? dad used to say. It's like the blind yeah. on the horse. It's it's interesting. Yeah, I, I I agree, and I mean I appreciate the the kind words, but yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what's gotten me from, you know, a middling director of strategic partnerships and business development to you know I I wake up every day for like the past you know six seven years, um, you know excited. To, you know the first couple of years were hard, different business retail. Glad it's gone. Um, you know, so definitely, you know, you learn from your mistakes, yep. um, you know, mistakes made lessons learned moving on. I've, I've said many times, but I, I get up every day excited to get up, like knowing that I'm sort of working towards a couple different things that are sort of building, uh, an empire, right? One That's one really another, good. I got to right? stop you. That's really good. What you just said, I, I get up excited to get up excited for the day oh, yeah. that yeah. is a maker that's a make or break there justin that's like you're you're there mentally you're there you're if you were my student i would be like crying with tears of pride you're you're definitely there uh, i'm that's working on it i'm out. a work in progress don't don't you worry i'm definitely no a work you're, in you're, progress. You're, everybody needs right. to, there's always perfecting there's always sculpting but i yeah. mean like you've already got the basis and and yeah. the, the success will come perfect no doubt. perfect well here's what i appreciate jennifer for joining us um where can they find you Where's the podcast? Uh, Twitter, Shoe with Authority. Shoe with Authority. Shoe with Authority, yeah, Shoe Shoe with authority yeah. or just my name, Jennifer Sheffer. I'm the only one on the planet. So if you find anything online, it's me. Brace yourself. I've had a fun time. And then <laughs> and then the, the podcast is on? Uh, Twitter, it's on right? uh, Barn Burner Network. It's on Zingo TV. Zingo, um, okay. Every Um, and viewers can download the barn burner or is there a the reason gaps? why it's live i just wonder why like is it can it not be recorded and i mean i can re we can record our own like in stockpile yeah. but once a week i go live it was offered like to it. me that's, and I'm like, hey, let's do it that's awesome that's cool so it is a live show on those channels awesome yep. say what's up to christian leah for us tell him we say hi and we'll have to get him on the show as well here um, absolutely so one last word, um, gonna go back to our tried and true. If there was one word that you would say to a younger you or to a somebody coming up in the game, or yeah, let's, let's go to the sports world or to entrepreneurs, but somebody coming up, um, what is that one word, that one piece of advice that you would give? Well, I, I, I don't know about one word, but one sentence, I can give you one sentence is don't let the doubters in your head. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to the doubters in your head. Is, nope. is it just the doubters in your head or the doubters all around? Doubters outside. Don't let them into your head. Don't let them. Okay. There you go. Don't Perfect. listen to the ones in your head either. Follow yeah, your heart. Follow they, your heart, people. Yeah. yeah there okay. you go. So, so, uh, fuck the haters as they say, fuck the That's doubters. It's yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, cool. Well, Jennifer, Thank you very much for joining me on the show. Thanks um, for having me. We'll, we'll talk uh, many, many times soon as the 3HL sure. uh, starts to ramp up again for, you know, what's the, the irony of it all? It's, I mean, people could argue season one, season two. We're ramping up for season three, three. of the 3HL. <laughs> there you go. Hey there. Welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. yeah. No the millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now.